Meta has gone all in on open source artificial intelligence. In a previous video, I already showed you a clip where Mark Zuckerberg says they will achieve AGI and will make it open source. And I'm going to be honest, I don't think I've given Meta all of the props that they deserve for all of the open source work that they've done over the years, even prior to Llama. And someone in the comments pointed this out and I did more research and it turns out they've actually open sourced a lot of really awesome products over the years. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. First, we're going to be talking about their most recent earnings call, which they essentially said, we are going all in on open source for artificial intelligence. And they actually spelled out exactly why that makes sense for their business. And I think all companies need to pay attention to this because this is the right way to think about open source. Then I'm going to show you other open source projects that Meta has released over the years. And by the end of this video, you're going to be convinced that Meta is really an open source company. But before we dive in, take a look at that video that I mentioned of Mark Zuckerberg saying they are going to achieve AGI and it's going to be open sourced. Hey everyone, today I'm bringing Meta's two AI research efforts closer together to support our long-term goals of building general intelligence, open sourcing it responsibly, and making it available and useful to everyone in all of our daily lives. Next, let me show you this post by Salmuth Chintella, and I apologize if I'm butchering your name. And he co-founded and led PyTorch at Meta, so no big deal. And he says, if you have questions about why Meta open sources its AI, here's a clear answer in Meta's earning call today from Mark Zuckerberg, finked as Mark Zuckerberg. So let's click into it. I know some people have questions about how we benefit from open sourcing the results of our research and large amounts of compute. So basically he's prefacing with, I know you guys are seeing we're giving away all of this stuff for free. We're investing billions of dollars into compute resources necessary to train these models. But what does that actually do for our business? Because at the end of the day, they're a public company and they need to produce results. So I thought it might be useful to lay out the strategic benefits here. The short version is that open sourcing improves our models. And because there's still significant work to turn our models into products, and because there will be other open source models available anyway, we find there are mostly advantages to being the open source leader and it doesn't remove differentiation from our products much anyway. So he actually talks about specifically the strategic benefits of open sourcing their AI. First, open source software is typically safer and more secure, as well as more compute efficient to operate due to all the ongoing feedback, scrutiny, and development from the community. This could not be more true. When you open source your code and you have thousands, tens of thousands of engineers all across the globe dissecting every single line of code, they're gonna be providing feedback, they're gonna be submitting PRs that allow the code to be much more secure than it would be if just a few hundred people inside of a company are looking at it. This is a big deal because safety is one of the most important issues in AI. Efficiency improves and lowering the compute costs also benefit everyone, including us. Second, open source software often becomes an industry standard. And when companies standardize on building with our stack, that then becomes easier to integrate new innovations into our products. So basically what he's saying is open source software often becomes the standard in the industry. And that is very true. There are numerous examples of that. And here's a few examples, Linux, Python, VLC, Firefox browser, PHP, the list goes on. And so if Everyone is standardizing around Facebooks. That just makes it easier for them to attract more developers to build on top of their stack. And it also makes it easier to integrate with other software because they are the standard. That's subtle, but the ability to learn and improve quickly is a huge advantage and being an industry standard enables that. Third, and Probably my favorite, open source is hugely popular with developers and researchers. We know that people wanna work on open systems that will be widely adopted, so this helps us recruit the best people at Meta, which is a very big deal for leading in any new technology area. And that is so true. From everything I'm seeing, everybody wants to work on open source because they wanna show off their work and they want their work to be better and more secure and more efficient, and they wanna collaborate. And I think this is a fantastic idea to hold. And the best part, it benefits Meta. So they are financially incentivized to open source their work because they're able to hire the best engineers who want to work on open source. 
And here he finally closes out with why just open sourcing the models is not going to hinder their business. We typically have unique data, all of Facebook's data, WhatsApp's data, Instagram's data, and build unique product integrations anyways. So providing infrastructure like Llama as open source doesn't reduce our main advantages. Completely true. Now, they're definitely not going to be open sourcing their data, though. This is why our longstanding strategy has been to open source general infrastructure and why I expect it to continue to be the right approach for us going forward. Okay. Okay, so only lately have I been giving tons of props to Meta because of their open source contributions, but I've been schooled. It turns out they've actually open sourced a lot of infrastructure over the years. Now, let's take a look at that. Here's a response to this post from Rohan Paul. Meta's OSS contributions cannot be ignored. Beyond Llama 2, they have open sourced React, one of the most popular development libraries out there. PyTorch, an incredibly important machine learning library. React Native, again, another very popular developer framework. GraphQL, Jest, Flow, Yarn, Hermes, FBT, Profit, Cassandra, and Mercurial. So they have put out a ton of very popular open source software over the years. So much props to them. Now, if we navigate over to the Meta open source homepage, we actually see all the projects that they've been building. And it is a lot. I'm just going to scroll down. Look at this. These are all research papers, libraries, a bunch of different assets that you can download right now. And if you remember, I talked about Segment Anything. Here's Detectron, AudioCraft, which is a great text to audio library that I talked about. And the list goes on. Look at this. I'm not even anywhere near the bottom of the page. I can just continue to scroll down. So a huge list of open source software. Very, very impressive. And it seems like they're actually already inspiring other companies. Apple is starting to release more and more AI papers and projects that are completely open source. And I'll be covering more of those soon. So Meta is an open source company and I cannot wait for Llama 3 to come out and they're already training that model, which I've already covered. AGI is going to be open source. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.